Hello everybody, praise be to God on this glorious day today, and welcome back to Spy Fox 2, Some Assembly Required. Right now we're trapped in the giant dogbot's mouth. Apparently the dogbot is like the center of the World's Fair and there's gonna be a million people coming. Do a million people come to the actual World's Fair? I'd, I'd like to know that. Anyhow. Laroche's goons didn't follow the assembly instructions close enough. They seem to have left a few gears missing out of this contraption. <laughs> oh no. They didn't build the fire escape properly, that's bad. So what we gotta do is we gotta put the gears together so the fire escape will work. These are all different sized gears and different sized gears I wonder gears where go this gear places. goes. This gear is too small. This gear is too small. There we go. You can always just use trial I error. bet this loose gear is supposed to go somewhere. And bada beam bada boom, we've got all the gears in place. That did the trick. Thank you, LaRoche, for kind of sort of following proper safety protocol. Well, I guess it's like they say. The tooth shall set you free. One of the best puns. Talk about escaping by the skin of your teeth. Now to stop LaRoche and his evil plans for world domination. My spy watch is beeping. I'd better answer it. Please stand by. Spy Fox, Agent Walter Wireless has intercepted a microfish message from Dottie Dash. Where is it coming from? It sounds like it's coming from an exhibit called We World. We World, eh? Sounds silly. The message is staticky, and Walter Wireless needs to get closer to hear it. You can pick him up here at the Mobile Command Center. By the way, I've recorded Napoleon LaRoche's evil plans, and I'm sending them to you via the Spy Watch. I look forward to hearing the dish. Monkey Penny, out. <laughs> I was recording his monologue on his evil plan the whole time because he's an idiot. But that's why, why <laughs> Fred Flintstone became a, a monkey. Uh, I like my supervillains to be dumb. That way they're actually easy to form. And nobody really takes them seriously. Anyhow, so that's the dog bot over there. The roach must spend an enormous amount of money on evil dog bot food. <laughs> oh, let's check out the plant exhibit, shall we? Is this plant world? Correct, my dear. I am Madam Ladybug, the slightly irritated owner of Plant World. <laughs> Instead of the beauteous red rose I ordered, I have been sent a mutant Venus flytrap by Napoleon LaRoche. Nice cage, though. A locked cage for which I have no combination. On top of it all, this particular Venus flytrap has something in its mouth. Interesting. It's the off switch. How diabolical of a roach to feed it to a mutant Venus flytrap. I've got to get it out of there and find a rose for the ladybug. No small feat. I can use this talk balloon to gather information about getting a rose for Madam Ladybug. Okay, I don't know why we can't just take it off her hands. Clearly she doesn't want it. So, I mean, we'd be doing her a favor. I would really love to put a rose in that display cage. You object to the mutant Venus flytrap plant? Of course I do. They eat insects, you know. <laughs> That's true. Also remember, pretty much everybody in this, as you know, everybody in this game is an animal, so. No, I don't like that. I apologize for the screen moving. Apparently OBS decided to move the all by itself. Uh, okay, yeah, sure, we can go this way. Why not? The World's Fair is impressive. I'd better answer my spy watch. Please stand by. Spy Fox, an informant has a hot tip about the off switch and is waiting for you at the Food of the Future exhibit. Ask for the candy apple. The candy apple. Got it, thanks. Monkey Penny signing off. Spy Fox out. All right, we got spy agents all over the place now. That's cool. We got the we got trains. That's pretty cool. We've got a DNA on top of an igloo. That's pretty cool. Everybody likes dinosaurs. That would be the best. That would be the Honestly, as far as the World's Fair goes, I feel like this is kind of lame. I mean, Disney World is a lot cooler than this. Wow, didn't expect to hear that fanfare in this game. Holy cow. 
Uh, let's go here, shall we? It's the food of the future! How about that? Apples have always been associated with wisdom. Don't you like the way they go crunchity crunch? Anything else? I like the way they go crunchity crunch. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. I'm not in the mood to eat right now. But it's ice cream on a stick. The cone it functions as a stick. I don't know why that's the thing, a thing. Very strange weather we're having, eh? Everything's great when you have food on sticks. Don't you think, sweetie? Yes, I suppose so. So, what's cooking? Food and sticks. And food on sticks. Food for thought? No, lamb chop. Food for eating. I like applesauce. Don't you? We don't have applesauce on a stick anymore, honey. It kept sliding off. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you'd probably have to freeze it first before you can put it on a stick. So, what's cooking? Food and sticks. All right, let's get the candied apple. So, that's my contact, eh? Brilliant disguise. I'd like a candied apple, please. Certainly, sir. Here at Food of the Future, all food is on sticks. It allows you to enjoy your favorite foods without using a knife or fork or having to stop what you're doing. Here you go, a free candied apple on a stick sample. Well, I have the candied apple. Isn't that just grand? Yes, but I, meaning me, have in my possession the candied apple. Only one candied apple sample per customer. Now run along and enjoy the fair, pumpkin. Maybe she wants me to come back when there are less people around. Oh, well, this candied apple looks good. Watch what you're doing. You want to give me a coronary? Ah, Lenny, you're the apple of my eye. What information do you have for me? Hi, Spy Fox. Listen close. There are spies everywhere, so don't look directly at me. This leaf contains the information that you need. This is too small to read. What do you want from me? I wrote it with my teeth. Now I got to split. People are starting to stare. Throw me in the dumpster. Suit yourself. Oh, what a waste of a candy apple. <laughs> I'm all right. Save yourself. <laughs> Poor Lenny. <laughs> also, we haven't seen him before, but that's okay. It says everything on sticks. Oh yeah. Also, this is like a theater. We can actually see different skits on Food of the Future, and they are great. It says Food of the Future. Uh, that, not that one. Ooh, from Yucko. Lard! Lard on a stick. In four delicious flavors. Egg and bacon. Kiwi pork. Cream corn and cabbage. And lard flavored lard. Isn't there anything Yucko can't do? Uh, uh, wouldn't you like to know, Jimmy? Wouldn't you like to know? Lard on a stick. I just want it noted, there was a company that paid for that advertisement for their product. Mmm, doesn't that look good? Lard on a stick sounds disgusting. Although as a kid, I didn't realize it. Back when I was stupid and couldn't really read or hear very well, I thought, I'm like, that looks like ice cream. That looks great. It's chocolate ice cream. No, it's not. It's lard. It is fat. No talking. Stay seated. Pimentos on a stick. What does that have to do with the product? It's like, oh, it's a good thing I had a pimento on a stick so I know how to sharpen a pencil on a beaver's tooth. Like, what? That makes no sense. <laughs> One egg. Very disappointing. Breakfast is 
deserved. That's one of the few ones that can actually be practical. That's actually a good commercial. <laughs> Visibility on a stick. That sounds very weird. It's movie time, movie time, movie time. All your favorites on a stick. Now playing. Was that advertising the food, the sticks, or the movie theater? I do not know. Spaghetti on a stick. <laughs> Get yours today. <laughs> I don't know. If I saw that on television, I would totally go out and buy me a meatball with spaghetti on a stick. I didn't realize there was a meatball in the middle. When I was young, I'm just like, he bit off part of the stick and he was okay with that. <laughs> That's weird. We've seen them all now. Yeah! Those are fun. I, I like those. The, the, the amount of care and effort Humongous Entertainment puts into their games just to put in all this extra stuff is great. Oh, it's the amazing caped cod! <laughs> Something seems fishy. Cod, bear your soul. Oh, I'm sadder than an ant in the neck brace at a picnic. In the old days, it never failed. The Cape Cod would razzle and dazzle with his mighty cape of joy, and then the finale. A shot out of the cannon. Sounds exciting. Then, one fateful day, we were at a sea monkey convention, and my assistants Goldie and Blow were setting up my act. My lucky clear goggles were misplaced, and in their stead was a pair of dark goggles. So what you're saying is that you need your lucky clear goggles? You ever try to steer yourself with dark goggles after you've been shot out of a cannon, son? Not lightly, no. <laughs> well, it's impossible to see the target. <laughs> that does sound a bit like a bit of a problem. It says the amazing caped cod. Uh huh. If, if you saw, there are not very many people in this World's Fair. Oh, there are a few people in the audience. There are, um, is he actually going to do anything? Oh, well, this is like the only spot, spot in the entire World's Fair where we can sit in the shade. So. You look like a daredevil whose luck has run out. You got me. Dead to rights. It's all over. The slightly overweight lady has sung. When did your luck run out? Well, son, I was getting ready for my infamous Out of the Cannon Act. During the setup, my assistants misplaced my lucky clear goggles. What's so lucky about them? I see through them, for starters. I can't hit the target without them. They left a pair of dark goggles for me to wear instead. Well, with me around, I'm sure your luck will change. Hopefully not from bad to worse. <laughs> Who makes dark goggles? That, that, sounds like a, that sounds like an item you would get in Metroid Prime. You seem like a cod that's down on his luck. You just wouldn't understand, son. Try me. You know what it's like to lose those special pair of lucky clear goggles that help you with your shot out of the cannon act? And then some workers misplace them while setting up your act and they leave a pair of dark goggles instead? So you try these dark goggles but you can't see so you end up missing the target every time? Can you identify with that, son? I feel your pain. Right. <laughs> oh, Cape Cod. He's, he's an interesting character. <laughs> Now please stand by. How's life, Spy Fox? Well, I got the candy apple, but Agent Lenny gave me a code that's too small to read. Maybe it's too late to shape an opinion. Open your mind. Monkey Penny, out. Good thing I like riddles, or this could be frustrating. <laughs> yeah, it's true, Monkey Penny. Oh, we didn't go in the DNA stand. Food cloning? Uh, does that work on stuff besides food? It says food cloning. Because if I had two spy foxes, it is spy fox two after all, then we could get this adventure done twice as fast. 
welcome to you clone it where you get two, two, two for the price of one. Stereo Sheep. I'm Doll and I'm Lee. Hello, Dollar. So nice to have you back where you belong. Yes, they seriously made that pun. <laughs> you clone it? You got it. Got one, one, two, clone it. Yes, and this is called You Clone It, as in female sheep you. Yep. <laughs> that happened. <laughs> well, Kazooie, where's Banjo? You're all by yourself. <laughs> She's like, thank goodness, Banjo finally gives me some time alone. <laughs> no wonder Kazooie's so cranky if she's an, in an introvert. I don't think she's an introvert. <laughs> Banjo seems like an introvert, though. Secret agent man. Terrible that bad guy put on those glasses, breathed on that breath device, and the secret door opened. That must be the secret door La Roche mentioned that leads to the inner workings of the evil dog bot. I need to <laughs> figure out how to get in, the in there. Just heard you, Spy Fox. Way to go. I love how he also introduces himself as Spy Fox to literally everybody. <laughs> it's like, hi, I'm Fox. Spy Fox. Oh, you're a spy, huh? Okay, cool. Now I know that. <laughs> Give me those. These rose-tinted glasses might come in handy. Well, let's try to go in, shall we? That's the locked door which leads into the dog bot's inner workings. I've got to crack the code to get inside. Indeed. Ugh, this thing has rejected my breath. I need to find out what I need to eat to get the right breath. Maybe you just need to brush your teeth, Spy Fox. If you don't brush your teeth, if you haven't brushed your teeth recently, then your breath's gonna be pretty bad. Now I look like a real spy. Boom. <laughs> I, spy Fox doesn't wear sunglasses, which is kind of disappointing. <laughs> This thing has rejected my breath. I need to find out what I need to eat besides taffy, kiwi, and pancakes. <laughs> Spy Fox's favorite food, by the way, for those of you who don't know, is pancakes. Wearing these rose-colored glasses all over the fair will give me a headache. Oh, you don't want to look at the world through rose-tinted glasses, Spy Fox? <laughs> Yuck. Yeah, I did that. Anyhow, if we go back to Plant World, we can't see the writing Lenny gave us, but there is a magnifying glass here. I can see a star, a circle, and a triangle on this leaf. Star, circle, triangle, eh? Hmm, it's some kind of combination lock for this display cage. Star, circle, triangle. I did it! Bada beam, bada boom. So, you really want a rose that bad, hmm? What's the good of a fly trap, my dear, if it refuses to open its trap to trap flies? I want a rose in its place. <laughs> Did you ask it? Maybe it's just shy. Well, for one thing, I don't speak Venus. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, for, she's like, I hate this Venus fly trap, but I'm not giving it to you unless you can give me a rose. <laughs> That's kind of extortion. Oh, it's an elevator. That makes perfect sense. I thought it was just a door. No, that's an elevator, and Plant World is up there. That's actually kind of cool! World's Fair still looks pretty disappointing thus far, though. It says, The World's Fair. Oh, hang on a second. I haven't been asking people about La Roche at all. I keep forgetting about my notes. What can you tell me about Napoleon La Roche? He delivered this mutant Venus flytrap to me instead of my rose. Now why do you suppose he would do that? I imagine it is because of his evil nature. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Where do you think I could get a rose? Follow your nose. <laughs> yes, I think I smell something. It's time for you to throw out your old cologne. <laughs> Sorry, Spybox. Hey, lady. Tell me about LaRoche. Polish your cheese later. What can you tell me about Napoleon LaRoche? All he talked about was the botanical exhibit he was about to see at Plant World. Probably because the plants are shorter than he is. <laughs> wow. Also, by the way, fun historical fact, everybody. L um, the real-life Napoleon was not short. He was just measured in, like, a new, weird French measuring system that, like, never caught on. Where it's like, oh, yeah, he was, like, five meters or so, or whatever he, he actually was. And, or, like, he was, like, five foot free or something, but, like, that was actually... It was actually more than that. It was just a new method of measuring, which made it sound like less, and people spread it around like propaganda, like, oh, Napoleon short, ha ha ha, like, to make it so people didn't, weren't intimidated by him. Do you know where I could get a rose for the nice ladybug? I noticed a rosy smell near the ice skating rink. Thank you. Yeah, that's nice. Thank you, lady. All right, Lee, all right, doll. Give me information, please. Pardon me, can you give me any information about this Napoleon LaRoche? He's so mean. He makes medicine. <laughs> yes, I imagine he does. Couldn't hear that. Forgot to turn my volume. I need a rose. Well, we'd all like a rose. And then... It's not for me. It's for a ladybug. Can't help you. Wait, I smell roses and there's no one there. You're just in love. Now, maybe it's the ice rink. It smells like roses. Thanks. <laughs> I like the sheep's design, though. The lab coats and, like, their little feet. It's a, it's a nice, it's a cute design. I like it. Hey, a kid cod. Yo, kid cod. Tell me about LaRoche. What can you tell me about Napoleon LaRoche? He spends all of his time with his plants. He should be watching your act. He doesn't have proper audience etiquette. <laughs> He'd be the one who's like, ah, bring out the show. And like, he's throwing stuff at the people. Excuse me, but could you tell me where I might find a rose? A rose, huh? Nothing rosy around here. It smells awful purdy around the ice rink, though. Maybe you should try there. Thanks, I might just do that. Dang, like, what's in the roses that they have at the ice rink? That people can are like, oh man, I, I smelt that and it, boom, roses. Knew it right away. This is interesting. Nice tall observation deck. What's this? I guess that's kind of it a cool. It looks like a pair of fair. binoculars. All right, let's see if we can see our principal in purple pajamas. I see a breath analyzer, and now I see that it's letting the bad guy type with the glasses on into the evil dog bot's Achilles heel. But what breath is showing on that screen? Hey, Grandma. She wasn't here. That earlier. breath analyzer is letting that bad guy type with the glasses on into the evil dog bot's Achilles heel. Hmm. I still can't see what breath Either is that showing on the screen. Just doing a loop over There's too much of a rose tint like that on that is. screen to see anything. And this is also cool. We can, like, they have this nice, big place we can just look around. It's very really cool. Oh my gosh, Grandpa Otter is feeding the fish. That's amazing. <laughs> Spybox is just peeping on people, looking around. So that's the exit, so the ice skating rink is right next to the exit. Fountains are cool. We got to see a lion's butt statue. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that Mr. Grin from Peter Pan was in the, the World's Fair. My apologies. Giant fire hydrant. Oh my gosh, there's a giant fire hydrant for the giant dog bot. Wow. Just wow. Do 
got a Cabrillo for sale. Let's give a Cabrillo for sale. Oof. Alright, what we want to do is we want to put on the glass, the rose tinted glasses before using the observation deck. Everything looks rosy behind a pair of rose tinted glasses. Yes, indeed. So we just gotta wait for the turtle to come back. I can see that goon breathing into the analyzer. Something's appearing on screen. It looks like pickle pot pie. That breath analyzer is checking for the aroma of pickle pot pie. Ew. I just need to eat some pickle pot pie and breathe into that breath analyzer, and then I'll be able to get in that evil dog box. Okay, Spyfox barely moved at all, and... I can use this talk balloon to gather information about the breath analyzer food, pickle pot pie. So, Spyfox barely moved in the rose tinted glasses, fell down the observation deck, it's like they land on Cape Cod, he's like, I guess these will work. <laughs> so, like, new, good new goggles. They're not dark, they're just rose colored. <laughs> and then we can take his goggles. No, actually not. Alright, so we've explored. Uh. That just happened. Okay, then. That was kind of dark. Whoa! Man. It was supposed to be. It was the, the, the forecast for the World's Fair was that it was going to be a sunny day. Also, we're above the clouds. As you can see, this is higher than the clouds. How can lightning be striking? This doesn't. Doesn't make sense to me. Anyhow. We've explored the northern part of the fair, which is most of it. We still have to explore the southern part, and we will do that in the next episode of Spy Fox 2. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Colorful Artie. Look forward to that next time. It should hopefully pick up a little bit. We just kind of had to introduce ourselves to a bunch of different people, and I had to show off all the different Food of the Future skits, because those are great. Anyhow, look forward to next episode, and until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.